Hi everyone, I hope everyone is staying fine and safe in this situation. I am Akinori Uesugi from Kanazawa University, Japan, and today I am going to give a lecture on burial mounds in Japan and the implications to the megalithic studies in India. Japanese archaeology is not my specialty, but I will try to give you an outline of the developments and significance of burial mounds in Japan. This is a broad chronology of prehistory and protohistory in Japan. The human occupations date back to 40,000 BP in Japan. There is a great possibility that it dates back earlier than this, but the archaeological evidence shows that the settlements considerably increased after this date. The Jomon period, which starts around 16,000 BP, is characterized by the developments of complex hunter-gatherer society. Recent researches has been increasingly showing that the people of this period was doing some plant cultivation. Highly decorated pottery of this period is a distinct expression of the cultural identity and complexity of the people. The German period is followed by the Yayoi period. Around 800 BC, rice cultivation was introduced from the Korean Peninsula and the agricultural society started and developed. Archaeological evidence exhibits the developments of social stratification as well. The Kofun period, which is the main topic of today's presentation, is considered as a period when a highly complex society emerged across Japan. A number of burial mounds, including extra-large ones, were built during this period. It is followed by the early historic period. This period sees the emergence of established state ruled by powerful kings. Bureaucratic organization also developed during this period. Emergence of large-scale urban centers is also a distinctive feature. This is the internal chronology of the Kohun period. The Kohun period started around mid 3rd century CE and continued to the late 7th century CE. So this period is divided into four phases. Early, middle, late, and terminal. However, these four phases are further divided into many subphases in terms of chronology. The burial mounds of the Kohon period are generally composed of an earthen mound and a stone built chamber which contains a dead body and different kinds of grave goods. These components of burial mounds change dynamically in shape and assemblage through the phases. In the late phase of the Yayoi period, relatively large burial mounds with only one or two burials appeared. It suggests the emergence of eminent regional political leaders in different parts of Japan by this time. As Chinese literary evidence refers to a large-scale warfare during the late Yayoi period dating to the late 2nd century CE, the appearance of large burial mounds likely indicates the reorganization of the political structure in Japan during or after the warfare. These two images show you the examples of burial mounds of the Yayoi period. Even in the Yayoi period, large-scale burial mounds were present, but the presence of multiple burials, in some cases more than 20, on one mound of the Yayoi period is a distinctive difference from the burial mounds of the Kohun period in which only one or two persons were buried. This change of the mortuary practice started in the late Yayoi period. Around the mid 3rd century CE, an extra large burial mound with a keyhole crown was abruptly built in the Nara Basin. The image in the left above shows the location of the Nara Basin. It's located in the center of Japan. The appearance of the first extra large scale burial mound in this region suggests that this region played a great role in the growth of a strong political power and the burial mound tradition of the Kohun period. The image in the left below is a map of the southeastern part of the Nara Basin. You can see a huge cluster of large-scale burial mounds dating to the late 3rd and 4th centuries CE. In this cluster, there is the earliest burial mound called Hashihaka Tumulus, shown in the right. It has a length of 280 meters and a height of 30 meters. 
However, soon after this first extra-large barrier mound of Hashihaka tumors, similar extra-large barrier mounds were built in different parts of the western half of Japan. It suggests that the polity of this period was made up of the alliance of regional political powers in different parts of Japan, and those political leaders introduced the barrier mound type, similar to the first extra-large barrier mound that appeared in the Nara Basin. So, different parts of Japan, especially its western part, contributed to the emergence and spread of distinctive barrier mound tradition and mortuary practice across the country. Along with the development of unique burial mound types, including the keyhole shape, a distinctive burial custom, including a rectangular stone burial chamber, a wooden coffin, terracotta crowns, which is called haniwa, and different kinds of prestige goods, was created and dispersed to different parts of Japan. You can see a stone chamber with intact parts of wooden coffin and different kinds of grave goods in the image in the left. A number of haniwa were placed just around the burial chamber to protect the person buried in the chamber from evil spirits, as shown in right above. Bronze mirror shown in the right below had a religious meaning and it was used as a status symbol as well. The grave goods include different kinds of rare items, such as bronze mirrors and iron weapons that were imported from China and the Korean Peninsula. Stone bees and some other items indicate the local development of craft production in Japan as well. So the emergence of extra-large burial mounds in the beginning of the Kohun period can be considered as changes in the political, economic, and ideological spheres and changes in the inter-regional interaction system across Japan. The political relationship with China and the Korean Peninsula also gave great impetus to this social-cultural transformation. The 5th century CE, or the middle phase of While extra-large burial mounds were built in different parts of Japan, the Osaka Plain emerged as the largest distribution center in the country, including the largest examples of burial mounds. It suggests that the Osaka Plain became the political center of this period, as the connection to the Korean Peninsula and China through maritime routes became much more important. The Bay of Osaka was important in the maritime trade. There are many references in Chinese texts to the envoys sent by Japanese kings to Chinese emperors. While in the early phase, large-scale clusters of large burial mounds were confined to the Nara Basin, the Osaka Plain emerged as a new center of large clusters during this period. Kuruichi Group and the Moz Group of Extra-Large Burial Mounds in Osaka became the World Cultural Heritage last year. There are a number of extra-large mounds in these clusters that can be considered as the burials of the royals of this period. New technologies of different kinds of craft productions were introduced from the Korean Peninsula, and local production centers were established in different parts of Japan which were maintained by the most powerful royal families in Osaka and the local political chiefs who controlled the prestige economy. Even among political chiefs in different parts of Japan, there were a considerable number of people migrated from the Korean Peninsula. Thus, this period can be considered as a process of the political competitions, growth and integration taking place including local and migrated chiefs, along with vigorous introduction of new technologies and craft productions. A number of craft production centers and workshops have been exposed in different parts of Japan. They include bead production and iron production. Haniwa, used on barrier mounds, were also produced in specialized production centers to provide a huge number of Haniwa to large barrier mounds. In the largest burial mounds in Osaka, more than 30,000 haniwars are presumed to have been used. In this sense, it can be concluded that the economy of the Kohun society was highly sustained by the continuous constructions of burial mounds in different parts of the country. The late phase of the Kohun period is a period when a prominent change in the burial practice and political reorganization happened. 
In terms of the burial practice, a new chamber type called the passage chamber was introduced from the Korean Peninsula and became widespread quite quickly across Japan. The grave goods also changed considerably, along with iron weapons and ornaments as prestige goods. Fortly vessels became an integral part of the mortuary practice. The significant change in the chamber type indicates the ideological change. Large burial chambers containing large stone coffins were made for kings and chiefs. A number of luxurious items imported from the Korean Peninsula and locally produced were placed with the dead to symbolize their power and ideology. The number of large-scale keyhole-shaped mounds became less during this period, as this type was adopted only by high elites, including kings and local chiefs. Small burial mounds prominently increased during this period, suggesting that the burial practice using burial mounds was penetrated to the population of the lower layer of the society. This example from the Osaka region illustrates the spatial shifts of burial mounds from the early to late phases. In the early phase, a burial mound cluster was built on low hills. The large cluster of large burial mounds emerged in the plain area during the middle phase. Then, hills of higher elevations were selected for constructing smaller mounds during the late phase. Buddhism was introduced by the immigrants from the Korean Peninsula by the mid-6th century CE and became a new ideology of elites. In the end of the 6th century CE, the earliest Buddhist temples were built in the Asuka region of the Nara Basin and in the Osaka Plain, which gradually developed into the early capitals of Japan. Adopting this new ideology and constructing temples became a significant major of elite people to symbolize their political status and economic power. Based on these evidence, this period can be regarded as a transitional phase to the following period with the advent of a new ideology taking place of the earlier one and the political reorganization towards the emergence of a more consolidated state ruling considerable parts of Japan that was eventually established by the beginning of the 8th century CE. The 7th century CE or the terminal phase of the Kofun period saw a significant progress in the state formation as stated above. While the earlier burial mound tradition persisted in some parts of Japan, the number of burial mounds considerably decreased, and the sizes of burial mounds also became smaller during this period compared to the earlier phases. Only the burial mounds of prominent elites include large-scale burial chambers. However, this does not mean a regress of political power of elites in Japan, but a significant change in the ideology. Instead of constructing lavish burial mounds, the elites across Japan ad adopted new ideology of Buddhism and began building temples to show their political power and political alliance to the emerging powerful state that was centered in the Nara Basin. Thus, the society during the Kohun period that was structured based on building burial mounds was transformed into a new social system of centralized state based on new ideologies and a new ruling system. In the 8th century, a bureaucratic system was introduced along with the writing system and the monetary system. Buddhism became the integral part of ruling the state and country. So, this is a summary of the burial mounds of the Kohun period. The widespread presence of extra-large burial mounds of highly standardized forms and features across Japan exhibits that different parts of Japan were incorporated into a cohesive interaction system during the Kohun period. Constructing burial mounds, regardless of their size, requires a large amount of labors. It clearly suggests that the burial mounds, especially extra-large ones, was a product of the exertion of prominent political powers, underlining the developments of super-regional and regional developments of political powers across Japan. With construction of burial mounds, different types of resources were intensively and extensively mobilized by political powers or social elites. It indicates that the economy of the Kohun society was highly motivated and sustained by the constructions of burial mounds. Therefore, 
The burial mounds of the Kohun period can be regarded as connected to the different aspects of the society, political, economic, religious, the mobilization of people, social organization, craft specialization, and so on. Now I am moving on to the megalithic culture in South Asia. As I have been working with my Indian colleagues on megalithic sites in different parts of the peninsula, I would like to provide some insights and perspectives for the megalithic studies based on the information from the case of Japan. The widespread distribution of the megalithic sites across the Indian peninsula indicates not only the distribution of megalithic burials, but also adaptations to different types of physical environments in the peninsula and possible exploitations of different types of resources. The emergences of different types of social cultural landscapes are also the distinctive feature of this culture. The common presence of stone built monuments, mostly burials, suggests the mobilization of people for labor to build them. The widespread occurrence of a uniform material culture indicates the development of interaction network covering the entire region which facilitated movements of people, goods, and information, including technological transfer and sharing ideologies. Thus, it is apparent that the Indian Peninsula megalithic culture was characterized by different aspects of the society, political, economic, and ideological, which exhibit a similar process to that of the Kohun period society in Japan. It appears that the wider interaction system absorbed different parts of the region, and various social cultural developments occurred across the region through constructions of megalithic monuments and their associated activities during the developments, diachronic and spatial, of the megalithic culture. However, the absence or elusiveness of extra large ones among burials in the megalithic culture is a remarkable difference from the case of the Kohun period. It may indicate that the megalithic society was not so highly stratified, or that the ideology symbolizing the social status through the size categorization of burials was absent. This difference may have brought about the trajectory of social cultural developments in the megalithic culture different from that of the Kohun period. In terms of the methodological problems, the megalithic studies in India has a lack of the detailed internal chronology to trace and examine the diachronic changes and developments of the megalithic culture. In the case of the Kohun period, tremendous efforts have been made to establish the well-defined chronology based on different types of evidence. As a result, the Kohun period, spanning over 400 years, has been divided into four major periods in which further chronological divisions, each of which has several decades have been made. The history of the Kohun period has been studied based on this well-defined chronology. The image on the right side is the chronological sequence of ceramics during the Kohun period. Many phases are divided to understand the morphological and technological changes in ceramics and to correlate them to other types of evidence to establish the chronology of the Kohun period. Further attempts to establish the internal chronology of the megalithic culture in India will definitely contribute to revealing diachronic social cultural developments of this distinct historical phenomenon. The recording system of megalithic burials and sites also needs some elaboration, especially under the ongoing situation of economic developments across the peninsula in which a number of sites are threatened to disappear. The recording method of sites using different kinds of technology on site and remote sensing are extensively applied to the research of burial mounds of the Kohun period. For example, the 3D modeling technology can give us data of high resolution. So the image in the center is a digital elevation model created by 3D modeling technology in my research project in Maharashtra. And the 3D modeling technology can give us a very good image and good documentation in the very complex megalithic sites and megalithic monuments. 
The megaristic cultures in South Asia have many potentials to contribute to our understanding not only of the history of the Indian Peninsula, but also of the significance of monumental burials in the his human history of the world. Future research on the megaristic culture in India is expected to provide new data and new discussions on this perspective. Thank you for your attention.